What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we had another very volatile day, but we did see the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones closing in the green. The tech sector is still seeing selling as we continue this sector rotation. So first up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so we did have another very volatile day in the stock market, and at one point we did see the SPY trading below support at 381. We were getting very close to looking like we were going to test that 50 EMA and possibly even try to close the gap at 377, but buyers did step in and we did close much higher for the day from the lows back above that 20 simple moving average. So we actually closed in the green, even though at one point we were trading down around 380, we did close all the way up here at 387. So that was a great day to buy the dip if you were a trader, and if you did buy those lows, you were handsomely rewarded as soon as the end of the day. Now the most important thing to watch for in these volatile times is watch the price action. On a day like today, the price action told us that a lot of buyers stepped in, and we did see significant buying from those lows, and it pushed us all the way higher to close higher for the day. We still have a bull trend with the 5 EMA over the 13 EMA, and the price action is still closing over top of a positive sloping 20 simple moving average. So as crazy as it sounds with all of the volatility that we've seen, this market is still bullish and we're still forming higher highs and higher lows as of today's close. Obviously anything is subject to change, but right now we're still in a bull trend and the market is still bullish, it's just being more volatile. So continue to watch support at the 20 simple moving average at 385, Watch the strong support level at 381 and the 50 EMA right around 378. And of course, don't forget about this gap close right around 377. Now it is possible that that was the end of the selling and we're going to continue to start heading higher, but I want you to be prepared for anything and I still want you to be disciplined in this market because it is possible that there is more selling coming around the corner even if we do get a relief bounce from here. We'll go over this in more detail on the NASDAQ 100, but typically speaking, if the market did hit a top and we're going through a correction, it typically goes into an ABC fashion like this. So if we were to go lower, let's just say we're going to close the gap at 377 and come all the way down to the support level around 374, that doesn't mean that we're just going to go down in a straight line. Typically, you'll go down in wave A, you'll bounce for a wave B, and then you will continue to head lower for a wave C, and that typically means that the correction is over. So you're looking for a three-wave move to the downside if we're going to see more correction in this market. I'm not saying that we have to go down in three waves, but either way you look at it, we're still going to get a bounce before we head lower, and that could be a great time to sell some of those positions you've been holding on to, and exit and possibly raise some cash, just in case we do go down for another wave lower for a wave C, you'll be able to put that cash to work at lower prices. Now typically these ABC corrections could last anywhere between three and four weeks, and you can see that we did somewhat hit a top around February 16th, so we are about a week into this correction. So that means we could still see a bounce from here and then a further continuation of the selling going into a couple weeks from now, so be prepared for that scenario because it is still possible. In order to invalidate this ABC correction, we would need to bounce significantly and get back above the 5 EMA and start heading back up towards all-time highs. Typically speaking, this B wave could go back up towards the all-time highs and we could see a double top, but either way, we're going to learn a lot from the price action and we don't know exactly how this correction is going to play out or if this correction is possibly even already over, so it's going to be 100% important to watch the price action. So that's why I always say let the trend be your friend and watch the price action because as you can tell from this market, it was still bullish and that gives you the confidence to buy the dip. If you don't know the health of the market and you don't know if it's bullish or bearish, how do you really know if you should be buying the dip or if you should be waiting for lower prices? So watch these key support levels very closely and watch how the price action behaves when the price gets to those levels. Next up is the NASDAQ 100 Triple Qs ETF and we did see the Triple Qs have an even more volatile day than the S&P 500 and we did close lower going down negative 0.3%. Now as you can tell from this candle, at one point we were trading below support and we went as low as $311. Support was right around 313 and we did see buyers step in in a big way and we actually closed above the 50 EMA. So price action above the 50 EMA is still bullish because we're still forming higher highs and higher lows in this market. Now the one thing that is bearish on the triple Qs is we do have the 5 EMA crossing below the 13 and the 20 simple moving average. So we are seeing some bearish trending building up in the NASDAQ, which means it's possible that we haven't seen the end of the selling just yet. 
So the number one thing to watch for the price action is watch to see if we get a close below 319. 319 is going to be that 50 EMA level. And if we start closing below that, it could be a trend shift and we could be seeing more selling in the future. However, just like I said with the S&P 500, you're going to want to look for something like an ABC move where we do get a B bounce, which is a relief rally from the selling in the A wave before we head down for a C wave. So watch for a bounce, but don't be afraid to take some profits if you're buying the dip and don't be afraid to exit some positions to raise some cash because if we do go down for another leg lower and complete that C wave and you don't do any selling on the B wave, you're just exposing yourself to more risk. If you're a long-term investor and you're holding your positions for many years, it's not that important. But as a trader, you have to stay liquid and you have to have some sort of cash in case we continue to go lower, you can put that cash to work. So right now on the B wave for the triple Qs, I want you to pay close attention to this resistance level right around 325. If we get to 325 and we start to see massive selling, that means we're likely going down for another wave lower and we're going to complete that C wave. If we continue to blast through resistance above and we head right back above 326 and we continue to head higher and start closing back above the 20 simple moving average around 329, that means possibly the selling is over and we're ready to go higher. So I can't tell you how it's going to play out because I need to see the price action and I need to see how the market reacts to those levels. All I can tell you is what to plan for and the worst case scenario right now is that we get this bounce and then we head even lower for the next wave. So I want you to prepare for the worst and hope for the best, but you never want to just assume the market is going higher or lower. Let the price action and let the trend guide your decision making. So on the triple Qs, watch resistance above at 326 and then watch these support levels below at 319 and 313. If we start breaking down below 313, this market is going to start looking a lot more bearish. But if we can hold up above 319 and possibly even break through resistance at 326, this chart does start looking a lot more bullish and we could see a resumption of the bull trend. But don't forget the NASDAQ 100 is no longer in a short term bull trend, it's actually in a short term bear trend. So we want to be defensive and we want to prepare for downside. That's how the trend works. We're going to let the trend guide our decisions and while the trend is bearish, we want to be more defensive and we want to expect downside. If the price action invalidates the trend and we continue to see the price action head higher, we can still jump in at the next support level and ride the market to the next new all time high. It's much better to let the price action guide our decision than it is to try to make a guess that could be wrong and we could lose money in the process. Next up is the Dow Jones and we also saw the Dow going green today closing up 0.06% and closing above the 5 EMA. Like I said in last night's video, we're seeing a sector rotation and we're seeing selling in the tech sector and we're actually seeing strength in some of the other sectors which we'll get to next. But right now with the Dow you can see that we did have volatility but we didn't even touch the 20 simple moving average today before we bounced and headed higher and closed at a high of the day. You can see that we're holding up above support around this 312 level and we're still in a bullish trend as we continue to trend higher. So the Dow is still looking stronger than the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 and I am expecting to see the Dow continue to trend higher. So price targets I want you to watch on the Dow are right up here at $322. That's going to be the first level of resistance that we will see the Dow struggle at and it is possible that we have to pay close attention to that level. Next up is the ARK-K ETF, and we saw ARK-K going down negative 3.3%, and again, a very volatile day. We did close above the 50 EMA, which is always going to be a bullish sign for the price action. We wanna see the price action remain above this level around 139, and we wanna to try to stay above this support level at 135 to remain bullish. If we do start closing below 135, it is likely that we're going to retest support around 124. Now upside resistance levels are going to be 142 and the 20 simple moving average around 147. So watch these critical support levels very closely because if they do start breaking down, that will tell us that we're likely going to see more downside in this market. Just like with the triple Qs, you can see that ARK-K is in a short term bear trend, so we want to remain defensive. So next up, I want to take a look at the sector since the topic of the night is sector rotation and I want to show you that this is not a broad stock market sell off. We still see the financials going up today, closing 0.61% higher and still closing above the 5 EMA with a very strong bull trend. On the industrial sector, we went up 0.31% and we also closed above the 5 EMA with a very strong bull trend. On the energy sector, we closed up 1.65% today and it's also above the 5 EMA with a very strong bull trend. So those three sectors all went higher today and they're all in strong bull trends. That is not what you see in a broad stock market sell off and this is not a broad stock market correction. This is simply weakness in the tech sector 
and the healthcare sector, which we also saw selling in today. So on the healthcare sector, we went lower, going down negative 0.17%, closing below the 50 EMA for two days in a row, and we definitely have bearish trending. So we see weakness in the tech sector and we see weakness in the healthcare sector, but we see strength across the board in the financials, industrials, and energy sectors. So why is that significant? Well, typically speaking in sector rotations, you want to identify if the stock market is still healthy. Right now, we simply see money leaving some sectors and rotating into others. That's still bullish for the stock market because we don't see money leaving the market. We just see money rotating around into different sectors, which is causing volatility. Why is that important is because eventually the rotation will end and the tech sector will rebound. So if you're a trader that's trying to buy low, you really want to be adding into the tech sector into the weakness and then you want to sell it into its newfound strength. You don't want to be chasing these sectors that are already higher because that would be chasing and those are the sectors that are likely going to see selling as we see the tech sector recover. So identify the cycles in the market and go put your money wherever you think it's going to do best. Right now, the tech sector looks like it's on sale and while some people still think it's overvalued, there's only so low some of these blue chip tech names can go before people come in and buy up the dip. Now on the VIX, which is our fear indicator, it's also very important to note that the VIX went down today. We saw the VIX going down negative 1.45% and it did get rejected at both resistance levels. We got rejected at the resistance trend line and then we also failed to close above resistance at the 24.8 level. The VIX is starting to show a little bit of bullish trending picking up, but we're also closing below the 50 EMA and the 20 simple moving average, which tells us that the VIX is still in a relatively bearish downtrend. So watch the VIX resistance right around 24.8 because if we do start closing over that level, it will mean that we're going to see a lot more volatility in selling in this market. But right now the VIX is relatively neutral and it's not implying that we're going to see a deep sell-off in the near future. If we continue to close lower and we break down below support, that's only going to bring more buyers into this market and we will see the market continue to trend higher as fear heads lower. On the US dollar, we did go up a little bit today, but we're still in a very strong bear trend and it looks like the dollar is continuing to trend down lower towards this $89 level. The reason that's significant is because a weak dollar typically is associated with a strong stock market. So right now the dollar is still looking weak and it does look like it wants to continue to head lower. On gold, we did see a little bit of selling today, but it looks like we're well on our way towards the price target at 1826. Support is still down here on gold at 1776. Next up is silver, and we did backtest support right around 27.5 since we broke that resistance level yesterday. We're seeing a confirmation bounce off of this level, which means silver is probably well on its way towards the next price target at $29. So watch this support level very closely because if it does hold up, silver is still in a bull trend and it's still heading higher. On Bitcoin, we see a lot of volatility, and currently Bitcoin is down about negative 10% and trading just above the 20 simple moving average at $47,800. Remember on Bitcoin that I did have my price target up here at 54700 and we did break above that level and I did raise my price target to 62000 However, this could have been a false breakout and it does look like we're seeing a lot of selling and a lot of volatility ever since we broke that level. So I did have Bitcoin finishing a fifth wave, so I just want you to know there could be a lot more downside in Bitcoin and it could actually be going into a short-term bear market. So it's possible that we see weakness or sideways movement in Bitcoin for the next month or two before it can cool off and get ready to head up for another leg higher. So I'm not a buyer of Bitcoin at this time because I still think it's possible that Bitcoin comes all the way back down to the 50 EMA. And really you wanna watch that 50 EMA very closely because it was support back here in January. That 50 EMA is right around a price target on Bitcoin of about $40,800. On Amazon stock, we saw it closing up 0.43% higher today and it does look like we found support around that 3090 support level. We're back within the consolidation wedge and it is possible that Amazon is still consolidating because we still have more time left in this wedge before it needs to break out. Remember in consolidation we could break out to the upside or the downside and we did already have two false breakouts to the upside on Amazon stock before we saw more selling and went back into the trading channel. So Amazon is coiling up and is getting ready for a big move in the very near future. So we need to continue to watch these support levels and these resistance levels to see which direction Amazon is going to break. Next up is Tesla stock, and we did see Tesla coming all the way down to that support level that I told you about last night, which is right around $618. Remember when we broke below the 50 EMA, that was a bearish sign, and it told us that Tesla still was likely going lower. The good news is on Tesla is we did see buyers step in at that support level, and we did close above support up here at $695. So while we did have a volatile day on Tesla, there's still a silver lining in that we did see buyers step up in a big way, and it does look like Tesla could form a base and start heading higher from here. 
Remember, I had Tesla finishing out a fifth wave, so it's still possible that it's going to move sideways and continue out this correction before it gets ready for an impulsive move to the upside. Just like we see on Amazon stock, it's very possible these stocks go too far too fast and then they go sideways as they correct through time before they get ready to head higher. So don't look for Tesla to be that same stock you're used to and don't look for it to be forming new all-time highs anytime soon. There's still a lot of correction time that Tesla has to go through before it can continue going higher and forming new all-time highs. On Apple stock, we went down just a little bit today, going down negative 0.11%. It does look like we found support around 120 and we did close above support around 124. We're still finding resistance at old support, which was 126. So we need to continue to watch that resistance level. You can definitely see Apple building up some bearish trending. So we need to see the price action start breaking through resistance. And we have a long ways to go to get back to the 20 simple moving average, which is currently sitting at 134. So Apple is looking very damaged right now and it has a long ways to go to fix this chart to look bullish. So right now Apple's on a bearish chart and I want you to watch support at 124 and 120 very closely. If those support levels do break down, it's likely that Apple is heading much lower so those are going to be very key support levels that you need to pay attention to. So going back to the S&P 500, you can still see that this looks like a sector rotation and we still see a lot of strength in the financials, industrials, and the energy sector. Tech and healthcare are definitely getting sold off but this could be short term pain and it could be a good buy the dip opportunity while the tech sector is low and getting beat up to pick up some great blue chip names at lower prices. So I'm going to continue to follow the price action and the trend. And right now the price action and the trend are still saying that we're in a bull market. So I'm going to remain bullish. As long as the market is healthy and it shows bullish signs, I want to buy the dip and I want to pick up good stocks at lower prices. And I want to hold them into the strength and then start profit taking as we start to see them head higher. This is the name of the game in the trading world and you have to be willing to take on risk if you want the maximum reward. You can't buy low if every time the market dips you're too scared to buy and you can't buy low if you're all in the market and you never take any profits and raise cash. Trading is a game of discipline and if you don't have the patience and discipline then trading is not going to be a profitable game for you. So if you're looking for a disciplined trading community consider checking out the Stocks Channel Discord. You can find out how to join the Discord community by clicking on the link in the description of this video. All right, next up, we'll take a look at our stock, which we're showcasing currently as the sole hot stock, and that is Lockheed Martin, ticker symbol LMT. We saw Lockheed Martin going up 1.69% today and blasting through our first price target at 344. So right now, since we have blasted through our first price target, it is possible that that level does act as support. And you can also see that we also broke through the 50 EMA. So if you missed out on Lockheed Martin and you still want in, Right now you're looking to buy at around 344 or the previous support down here around 340. Now the next price target is just right above around 348. And if we can break and close over that, it means we're well on our way towards the final price target around 357. So this is one of those great stocks to have in your portfolio if you're too heavy in the tech sector because this is in the defense sector which gives you a little bit of variety. So also just a quick note, the reason we did away with some of the other hot stocks is because I simply don't have the time to cover that many hot stocks every single night. I truly apologize for all of you who felt stranded and that I left you in the dust with some of those stocks. But if you watched last week's video, I give you all of the information you need to properly trade those stocks. Moving forward, I likely will have a lot less hot stocks and we will likely do away with that segment until I get more time to deal with it. So right now we might just showcase stocks. And if you're interested in more stock ideas and more hot stocks, you really need to be on the Stocks Channel Discord anyway where I do daily updates for hot stocks and I give you more stocks at the ground level. So if you haven't already, come check us out at the Stocks Channel Discord which you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market and as always, I will see you in the next episode.